I know that you have this huge initiative with 4-H coming up. Could you tell me a little bit about that? <laughs> well, it's, we did a quiz show, yeah. a game show, based on this uh, product about exploring Mars. And I, you know, I talk all the time about Mars because <laughs> until, <laughs> until this discovery of uh, this uh, unique gas in the Venusian atmosphere, Mars was really the only place anybody was going to go looking for life. And I say all that on another world. And I say all the time, if we were to discover evidence of life or stranger still, something still alive on Mars, it would change the course of human history. Yeah. And so uh, this exploration is done with science. And, uh, for, you know, when I was growing up, 4-H was agriculture, head, heart, hand, and health. But now it's uh, much more than that. And these kids are really impressive. The, the uh, students on the teams were really something. Definitely. Yeah, you mentioned that 4-H, I mean, when I was growing up as well, it was all agriculture. You know, kids would get together and they would raise animals and, and they would work with local farms. But this seems to be so much more expansive and really incorporating all branches of STEM and STEAM. Um, how has that been? Is this new for 4-H? Are you introducing it kind of to them or is this kind of... Yeah. Well, these, uh, these students were all into computer programming, robotics, additive, manu 3D printing, manufacture, all these things. And, and they're um, outer space enthusiasts. And yeah. so this is really a logical connection. But I also, before we go on to the next thing, I remind everybody that agriculture, modern agriculture, where we feed almost 7.8 billion people around the world relies on space assets. Uh, global positioning systems are used for planting all the seeds on modern large scale farms and uh, the uh, weather forecasting and the infrastructure to move the food from farms to markets is all relies on sp outer space. So uh, what, we've, what we are able to do with our orbiting spacecraft and so on. So uh, while uh, it may seem to many that 4-H is going in a completely different direction by embracing robotics and coding and, um, and uh, additive manufacture, it's actually, for me, the science educator is all of a piece, all one thing. Absolutely. So I know that, you know, especially right now, it's really important for families to be able to incorporate STEM learning at home with, you know, not just online instruction, but hands-on activities. And it seems like that's going to be kind of an integral piece of this initiative. Could you speak a little bit about how, how this is going to be hands-on, how people can participate from home? Well, uh, there's so much, I say all the time, you can teach any aspect of science with space, space science. Yes. And so there are activities involving uh, erosion, sand dunes, the formation of mesas, the chemistry of water and clays. Uh, uh, what, what, what would you need to do to search for life? What is it about living things on Earth that would inform your exploration of this other world, of Mars? And so there's all sorts of materials associated with getting people, students, to ask those questions and seek those answers. And of course, you know, I'm CEO of the Planetary Society, and we're all about this. This is our whole thing, is get excited about planets, uh, other planets, uh, and Mars especially. Definitely. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm here from space.com. I am, I am no stranger to the Planetary Society and an incredible work you guys do. And we are so thrilled about how space exploration is and, and the trajectory that we hope that it's on. How important is it to get these young people, not just engaged with STEM, but specifically engaged with you know, studying space and understanding that we are looking for life outside of Earth and how we're doing that and why we're doing that. Why is it so important to involve them in that way? Well, everybody who's 
let's say there's going to be somebody walking on Mars someday. Well, that person's in elementary school right now. So yeah. we going to engage uh, future astronauts, future space explorers uh, as soon as we can. And by that, I mean pre-kindergarten and on. You know, as, as we say at National Science Teachers, we want science every day in every grade, the same way you have language arts every day in every grade. And so getting kids excited about planetary exploration is part of that because uh, this is how we learn about our own world is by studying the other worlds, you know. So it's generally agreed that, for example, climate change in the modern era, that is to say in the late 20th century, climate change was discovered on Venus uh, that James Hansen at GISS, Goddard Institute for Space Studies, was looking at Venus and realized the importance of the greenhouse effect. And then that converged with uh, understanding of what would happen if the Earth was hit with an asteroid. And uh, then we realized the importance of gases in atmospheres and how it affects climates of planets. So there's that big picture. You learn more about the Earth by studying other worlds. But two things for me are really important. For, for, oh, three things. First of all, study other worlds because you don't know what you're going to find. I mean, you're going to, the unknown horizon, as we say, unknown horizons. But then the search for life is profound. I mean, if we found evidence of life on Mars, it would change the course of human history. Everything would be different. Everybody would feel differently about being a living thing in the cosmos. And then the third thing, you don't want the Earth to get hit with an asteroid, people. You look at the surface of Mars, it is pockmarked, it is chock full, it is laden, it is covered with asteroid impact craters, or meteor, meteoroid impact craters. And the Earth, you figure, once was also, just we have this tectonic processes and all, these, uh, all this erosion and weathering that the, most of the craters are gone. But uh, it, I was, it was in my lifetime, probably, I don't know you, but just looking at you about your age, when uh, the discovery that the ancient dinosaurs were almost certainly finished off by an asteroid impact. That was profound. Before that, when I was in second grade, uh, it was claimed that the ancient dinosaurs were killed because they had small, or died off rather, because they had small brains. And so mammals, you know, mice and rabbits took all the Tyrannosaurus food and they died. And it was just, my second grade teacher just knew that was silly. I mean, she was like, I, I'm supposed to read this to you, but come on. And so uh, it was in my lifetime that this discovery was made, and it's all about space. Asteroids, how fast they're going, how big the crater is, how big the ejected, the, uh, the cone of the ejected material, the ejecta, how all that stuff was discovered just very recently in scientific terms. And so studying Mars is of great value to all of us. <laughs>